In this video, we're going to be solving this example problem here, um, and we're going to be doing it with block diagram reduction by using these rules here. And if you're wondering where these rules came from, I, uh, I also made a video where I go through and derive all of these, but for this video, we're just going to assume that we know them and we're going to use them to solve the problem. So the problem says, find the transfer function from the input x to the output y of the block diagram below, and then it shows us this block diagram. So what we want to do is basically take all of this and reduce it into one transfer function that's some combination of all these different g's. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this and we're going to say, okay, what can we get rid of? What can we combine? Um, you can see that we don't have anything in series that we can just real quick combine or anything that's obviously in parallel that we can combine. This feedback loop, we can't do that because this is in the middle of it, so it's not just a pure feedback loop. Uh, so what I see right off the bat is that these two, those are in parallel. And we can combine those, except for we have this extra branch coming off here. That sort of makes it not so easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this takeoff point and I'm going to move it to the other side of G2. So that way these two will be in parallel and we combine them. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that for moving a takeoff point upstream, which is what we're doing, because the arrows are going to the right, and we're moving this takeoff point to the left. So moving a takeoff point upstream, we are going to multiply. So we can go ahead and start redrawing this. So we'll have, let me make sure everything's visible, x going into g1, then we'll come up here, and I'm just going to move this takeoff point over right now. So we're moving it over g2, so we're going to multiply it by g2. So we'll put that in this branch. And then we still have this other branch from before. And that's going to have G2 as well. And then this one is going to combine here, the negative sign, positive sign, positive sign down here. And then this G2 is going to go over to this summing junction, which is after G3. And that's this takeoff point moved. And I'll just go ahead and cut to after I redraw all of this so you don't have to watch it. Okay, so now that we've got it redrawn, you can see that all we've done is just taking this takeoff point, moving it to the other side of G2, and then we multiply that branch by G2 to keep everything the same. And now what we have is we can see that these two, G1 and G2 here, are clearly in parallel. So we can check our rules and see that blocks in parallel, we just add them together. And here we've got a positive sign from the G1 branch and a negative sign from the G2 branch. So all this can be combined into G1 minus G2. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got X coming in right into a block that's G1 minus G2. And we're going to keep this summing junction here because we still have this part of the summing junction, and you can break these summing junctions apart. You can have one with this top branch coming in and another one with the bottom branch coming in. Since it's all linear, you can add before or after. You can move summing junctions between each other, and that doesn't change anything. So we have to leave this one because we still have this positive branch coming in from the bottom, and then we'll just redraw the rest of it. Okay, so now that we've got this redrawn here with these two blocks combined, we can see that we once again are going to need to do some rearranging to do anything because this parallel part we've got this summing junction in the middle and this feedback part we've got this summing junction in the middle so let's go ahead and move one of those so that way we can get some more work done so i'm going to take this one and move it upstream so bounce it over g3 and to move a summing junction upstream we're going to divide so that means that we're going to move this over here and then divide this G2 by what we moved over, G3. So we'll have X coming in. And then up here in this branch above, instead of just G2, we're going to have G2 divided by G3. We're going to have G1 minus G2 there. And then this summing junction is going to be moved to the other side. So first we'll have this summing junction, and then we'll have that one we just moved, 
And like I said, these two are interchangeable now, since they're right next to each other. And then we'll have G3 here. These are both positive. And then the rest of it is going to stay how it was before. Okay, so now that we've got this redrawn with this sum injunction moved to this other side, we can see that this G3 and G4 are in series. And from our rules, we know blocks in series, we just multiply them. So we can combine those two into one block called G3, G4. And then also in this step, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch the location of these two. And that's just a visual switch, because like I was saying before, you can add this stuff first or add it second, and it's all just addition, so it's going to give you the same result in this signal either way. So I'm going to switch these two locations and combine these two. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now you can see that I've swapped the position of these two summing junctions. And by doing that, we can see that these two blocks are very clearly just in parallel. So we'll combine those like we did G1 and G2 at the beginning of this problem. And these two blocks, that's a feedback loop, so we'll use the feedback rule. So first combining these in parallel, we're going to have G1 minus G2, that's this block, and then everything's just being added together here, so we'll just go plus G2 over G3. And that's all one block now. And then for this feedback loop, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our feedback rule. So in this rule, it tells us that if we have G on the feed forward path and H in the feedback path, it's going to be G over 1 plus or minus GH. And since we have positive feedback, the positive signs on the bottom here, negative signs on the bottom there, so we're going to use a negative sign. So we'll go ahead and change that. So it's going to be the top, G3, G4, over... 1 minus the top, again, G3, G4, times the bottom, G5. And you can see how that all lines up with what we have here. And this is all one block now. Then we still have the G6 at the end, going to Y. Okay, from here, we have everything simple enough that we can just start writing the transfer function. So we can see that all three blocks that are left, they're all in series, so they just all multiply together. So that's going to tell us that the output y over the input x is just going to be equal to the product of these three blocks. So I'm going to write this block first here, g1 minus g2 plus g2 over g3. And that's going to be multiplied by this times this, and I'm just going to multiply this g6 into the numerator up here, so I'm going to have G3, G4, G6, all over 1 minus G3, G4, G5. And maybe you can leave it like this depending on if you're uh, your professor or whatever, what they want. But I'm going to go ahead and just go one extra step to multiply all of this into here, just to put it into one fraction. So I'm going to have y over x is equal to, multiplying this g1 in, we're going to get g1, g3, g4, g6, and then minus g2 times all of this, minus g2, g3, g4, g6, and then plus g2 over g3, this g3 is going to cancel with that one, so we'll just get g2, g4, g6, and then all of that over 1 minus g3, g4, g5. And this is our final answer. So, what we've solved here <coughs> is that this whole block diagram can be represented with just this one transfer function. And that's what the problem is asking for, so we're done. Now, one last thing to note here is I'm going to make a video where I solve this problem a different way, so if you don't like having to redraw all these block diagrams, you can check out my other video on how to do this, and I'll link that below, just below where the video about deriving these rules is. So, thanks for watching.